when we last left off, we were reading the lottery. Um, and so we're going to pick up on paragraph six for this lesson. And you will not have a Kahoot to begin with for these paragraphs. So um, your assignment is still to continue the first five paragraphs for Kahoot. But I do want you to follow along as I read uh, the next few paragraphs. Mr. Martin and his oldest son, Baxter, held the black box securely on the stool until Mr. Summers had stirred the papers thoroughly with his hand. Because so much of the ritual had been forgotten or discarded, Mr. Summers had been successful in having slips of paper substituted for the chips of wood that had been used for generations. Chips of wood, Mr. Summers had argued, had been all very well when the village was tiny, but now that the population was more than 300 and likely to keep on growing, it was necessary to use something that would fit more easily into the black box. The night before the lottery, Mr. Summers and Mr. Graves made up the slips of paper and put them in the box, and it was taken to the safe of Mr. Summers' coal company and locked up until Mr. Summers was ready to take it to the square next morning. The rest of the year the box was put away, sometimes one place, sometimes another. It had been, it had spent one year in Mr. Graves' barn and another year underfoot in the post office and sometimes it was set on a shelf. It was set on a shelf in the Martin grocery and left there. There was a great deal of fussing to be done before Mr. Summers declared the lottery open. There were the lists to make, make, up, make up of heads of families heads of households. In each family, members of each household in each family. There was the proper swearing in of Mr. Summers by the postmaster as the official of the lottery. At one time, some people remembered there had been a recital of some sort performed by the official of the lottery, a perfunctory, tuneless chant that had been rattled off du duly each year. Some people believed that the official of the lottery used to stand just so when he said or sang it, others believed that he was supposed to walk among the people. But years and years ago, this part of the ritual had been allowed to lapse. There had been also a ritual salute, which the official of the lottery had had to use in addressing each person who came up to draw from the box. But this also had changed with time until now it was felt necessary only for the official to speak to each person approaching. Mr. Summers was very good at all this in his clean white shirt and blue jeans with one hand resting carelessly on the black box he seemed very proper and important as he talked interminably to Mr. Graves and the Martins. Just as Mr. Summers finally left off talking and turned to the assembled villagers Mrs. Hutchinson came hurriedly along the path to the square her sweater thrown over her shoulders and slid into place in the back of the crowd. Clean forgot what day it was, she said to Mrs. Delacroix, who stood next to her, and they both laughed softly. Thought my old man was out back stacking wood, Mrs. Hutchinson went on, and then I looked out the window and the kids was gone. And then I remembered it was the 27th and came a-running. She dried her hands on her apron, and Mrs. Delacour said, You're in time, though. They're still talking away up there. Paragraph 9 
Mrs. Hutchinson craned her neck to see through the crowd and found her husband and children standing near the front. She tapped Mrs. Delacroix on the arm as a farewell and began to make her way through the crowd. The people separated good-humoredly to let her through. Two or three people said, in voices just loud enough to be heard across the crowd, Here comes your Mrs. Hutchinson. And Bill, she made it after all. Mrs. Hutchinson reached her husband and Mrs. Summers. Mr. Summers, who had been waiting, said cheerfully, Thought we were going to have to get on without you, Tessie. Mrs. Hutchinson said, grinning, Wouldn't have me leave him dishes in the sink now, would you, Joe? And soft laughter ran through the crowd as the people stirred back into position after Mrs. Hutchinson's arrival. Well now, Mr. Summer said soberly, guess we better get started, get this over with, so we can go back to work. Anybody ain't here? Dunbar, several people said. Dunbar, Dunbar. Mr. Summers consulted his list. Clyde Dunbar, he said. That's right, he broke his leg, hasn't he? Who's drawing for him? Me, I guess, a woman said. And Mr. Summers turned to look at her. Wife draws for husband. Mr. Summers said, Don't you have a grown boy to do it for you, Janie? Although Mr. Summers and everyone else in the village knew the answer perfectly well, it was the business of the official of the lottery to ask such questions formally. Mr. Summers waited with an expression of polite interest while Mrs. Dunbar answered. We'll stop there. Um, Paying particular attention to the way the people in this village are talking. So they're using terms or language that is typical of a southern community. Um, we did say that the setting was probably uh, not present time. So this is a, a past time, probably a long time ago. Uh, think about how something like this would go over now. How would we respond to a lottery where people in the town get together and draw uh, tickets out of a box? So we know that that probably would not go over very well. Um, and uh, so the, the setting is different. And uh, be thinking about what is going to happen next so we we know that all the town has gotten together for this lottery drawing and we know that it's a very official or formal process that they're going through and um what to expect next is uh what what do you think will happen